My name is David Wancha, better known as Vegas Dave. My dream was to be the number one sports better in the world. But when I was young, my parents wanted me to have an education and a college degree. So against my own wishes, I went to college just for them. However, that did not last long at all. I took my student loan from UNLV and instead of buying books and school supplies, I took the entire $10,000 student loan and put it all on red and roulette at the Palms. It hit and my journey began. But when I started my journey, no one believed in me. Everyone thought I was crazy, even my own parents. My mother is Japanese. She grew up on a farm in Pearl City, Hawaii. My father is Romanian. He was an orphan and was left on someone's doorstep as an infant. One day, he took the biggest gamble of his life and he escaped from a communist country and came to the United States. He couldn't speak a lick of English except for two words, thank you and Coca-Cola. At the time of my father's escape, he prayed to God for two things, to have a son to carry his last name Wancha and that his son would not be poor and not have to worry about money as he did. My parents met in 1974 and two years later, they gave birth to their only child. I'm a manifestation of my father's dream. During my sports betting career, there were many ups and downs, but at one point, I hit rock bottom. I had gambled away all my winnings and even my savings. I owed an extra $850,000 in a gambling debt and had to attend Gamblers Anonymous to get help. I had no solutions, no answers, and nowhere to go. So I turned to my parents for help. This was the most shameful, embarrassing, and lowest point in my life. They took every dollar they had saved for the retirement and used that money to bail me out of debt. For some reason, they believed in me and they knew I could turn my life around some way and somehow. I did not last long in GA. However, it was there where I had an epiphany and I realized I really had a gift from God. I could pick winners at a very high rate, but what I learned from GA is that I had a money management issue, not a gambling problem. See, in the world of sports betting, it's 50% skill and hard work and a little bit of luck. But the other 50% is money management and discipline. And that's why the casinos are so damn rich and why there's a new casino going up every year on the strip of Las Vegas because people cannot manage their money. I dropped out of GA to pursue my dream as a professional sports better. And a few years later, I broke the code. I beat Vegas. I did what 99% of the world could not do, and that's beat Vegas. But not just beat them, but beat them for millions and millions of dollars. I hold every record-breaking payout in the history of sports betting, including the $2.5 million payout on the Kansas City Royals in 2015, when I predicted that they would win the World Series at 30 to 1 odds in the first week of the season. Everyone called me crazy, but I went all in on a team that hadn't won a World Series in 30 years. I also cashed out a $2.3 million payout on the Denver Broncos, winning the Super Bowl in 2016. I bet I placed before the season even started at 18 to 1 odds. To the tune of $2.3 million and made $2.5 million after the Royals won the World Series. The Royals! Just like the Royals, no one believed in the Broncos because of the aging Pete Manning, but I did. After cashing out almost $10 million during a 12-month run, the casinos in Las Vegas had enough and they banned me. Are they, are they ever going to take my bets again or here or no? I'm probably not. They, don't, they hate losing. They hate losing? Yeah. They hate losing, right? So you don't think there's any chance they're on, they'll unban me? Most likely not. They're too good. What's that? Too good. Not only would they not take my wagers anymore, but they refused to pay me the money they owed me, which I had won fair and square. They thought I would back down and walk away. But instead, out of principle, I demanded my winnings that they owed me. And when it couldn't get worse, the federal government and the casinos teamed up and came after me. Vegas Dave is being accused of lying to casinos to hide winnings from the federal government. I was indicted on 19 alleged felony counts and was facing 40 years in prison. Within minutes, the world labeled me as a criminal. Overnight, my dream had crumbled. Everything I worked for for years was taken from me. Within minutes, my life shattered. 
it crumbled into pieces. No income, and my freedom was on the line. I can tell you that it's very scary when an indictment comes down because it, it says the United States of America versus blank. And in this case, it was the United States of America versus Dave. I had to do something. I had to pivot. I had to find a way. I cannot stay stagnant, so I reinvented myself. I adjusted from being a sports better to a sports betting consultant. Because I was banned from betting on games, I would now provide information and tips to help other people beat the books and casinos just like I did. Within one year, I became the number one sports betting consultant in the world. I was featured on global platforms such as ESPN, Fox Sports, USA Today, and Forbes. The beautiful thing is not only was I making money, but I was also helping thousands of people around the world make a secondary stream of income as well, using my skills and my talents. What many didn't know is that while building this new empire, I was still fighting the federal government for my constitutional rights and freedom, and still facing 40 years of prison. Despite the pressure of having my freedom on the line, I was mentally strong enough to shut down all the outside noise and to continue to build my empire. Dave was engaged. I mean, it was his life was on the line. It was going to be a battle. Could be won, could be lost. During this stressful time, I was also hiding something from the rest of the world. My mother was just diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. At 80 years old, the doctors gave her less than a 5% chance of living. While my mother was fighting for her life, I was fighting for my freedom. This was the toughest time of my entire life. My federal case lasted an exhausting three years. After the first year, the feds initially offered me a deal, 15 years in prison. I refused. Months later, they offered me 10 then five. Then they finally offered me a one-year prison term to strike a deal. Resolutions that were in the normal setting been really good to take, but Dave was insistent that he was not going to be convicted of a felony. He wanted justice. He wanted, you know, the truth to come out. He did not want to look like a criminal. He did not want to look like a thief. He did not want to look like a liar. Many believe this would be a considered a victory for me, walking away with one year behind bars. However, I still said no. I knew I was not a criminal, and I refused to become a felon. After three agonizing years, my federal case ended. I received no felonies, no prison time. All felony counts were dropped. What's even more amazing is that even though doctors gave her less than a 5% chance of living, my mother was able to beat stage four pancreatic cancer. And I'm proud to say she is now 100% cancer free. Today, everyone sees my success. They only see the destination, but they don't see the journey. The sleepless nights, 18 hour work days, many nights alone. Not a day off in the last four years, the dedication, the grind, the sacrifices. People don't understand that success is hard, that it's earned and it's not given. All of us have different dreams and goals. My ultimate dream was to take care of my parents, to give them the retirement they deserve. Not only did I pay them back every dollar they loaned me, I recently purchased them their dream home, a 7,500 square foot, $4 million house that I paid in cash. And I handed over the keys to them just the other day. To me, this is the ultimate success and achievement in my life. I'm able to honor and take care of the very two people that never gave up on me. I owe my parents my life. All the success, all my accomplishments, and the achievements I owe to them. They never stopped believing in me, and they took a huge risk on me as well. It was my obligation in life to make sure their gamble paid off, and it did. There's not one day that goes by where people don't call me a scam, a crook, a liar, a fraud. Because success breeds haters. But this doesn't bother me one bit. They laughed at my Birkin collection. They laughed at my baseball card collection. And they said nobody would ever buy picks from a so-called criminal. To this day, they continue to talk about me because I choose to live with my parents. But I live with them not for financial reasons, of course, because it's the two people I love the most in the world and I want to see them every single day. Despite my success, 
People continue to laugh at me. They laugh at me because I'm different. However, I laugh at them because they're all the same. See, I'm okay with the haters. I actually embrace them. Because to me, haters are just confused admirers. They're just fans in denial. See, in life, we all hit rock bottom. You may go through a divorce. A loved one may pass away. Your business could crumble, or you could even lose your job. But no matter what happens to you in life, never give up on your dreams. If they laugh and call you crazy, that's okay. Don't expect ordinary people to understand extraordinary dreams and visions. Remember, vision is seen with the brain, not the eyes. If I could build an empire while facing 19 felonies and 40 years in prison, then you can make it through your hard times too. In life, God will throw you a lot of curveballs, but it's how you overcome and persevere through these tough times that will determine your fate. Believe in yourself and remember, never give up on your dreams.